Seahawks fans, wherever you may be. Welcome back for another edition of the Seahawks Playbook Podcast. Join your host, Bill Alpstead, and co-host, sports writer and football analyst, Keith Myers, as we talk Seahawks football. Another edition of the Seahawks Playbook Podcast. I'm your host, Bill Alvstead, here with Keith Myers. Keith, welcome to the show. I've got a lot of information to, to put out there today, including our first official show with our official uh, podcast network, the Pigskin Podcast Network. And uh, we're, we're pleased to have that affiliation. And uh, it's a great group of people. We're looking forward to, um, to being part of that group going forward. And gives us a nice studio, a virtual studio to use um, for our, our uh, potential live shows as well as our video recording. And then the audio stuff uh, doesn't change. All the content really doesn't change. We've already gone to a three show a week format. So uh, everyone's kind of somewhat familiar with that. But that's what we'll be doing going forward. So again, welcome in. Yeah, um, super excited. Yeah, this is our first show as a member of the network. So um, network officially kicked off on September 1st, and it is um, this is the second, isn't it? Yeah, this is the second. So it's sep- uh, September 2nd, we're recording. So um, we've got the, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see our the, the little TPPN uh, logo on there. and yeah, With and the emphasis of little. We, we, need, we talked about that ahead of time. We need it's to a, bump that up a little bit. It's a little on the little side, yeah. yeah. It's. Um, I probably need to work with our folks because he's been helping everybody with with logos and stuff, and I tried to do it, and you know, maybe I just need to reach out for some for some help. On <laughs> maybe. So we got a we got an interesting show because the yeah. Seahawks. Since the last time we recorded, last time we recorded, we we predicted the fifty three man roster, and now we have the fifty three man roster in front of us, and you, neither one of us. Was all yeah, that I was close? Ask you how you thought we we did. I think we did overall pretty well, and and some of the things that we just couldn't predict happened. True, um, but even within that, like there there's some weirdness that um, we just didn't have uh, happening. Like we had nobody neither had nobody, had no one was predicting that the Seahawks were going to keep three quarterbacks, um, and then they did. And then then I got the the news saying, hey, they they did cut. Uh, Mannion, and I was like, okay, fine. So he was just a placeholder for a day, but they replaced him with another quarterback. So I literally yeah. don't have any idea what's going on there. <laughs> and that's okay. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about um, kind of what's going on uh, today. So the, today's going to be the, the roster mm-hmm. kind of review show or reaction show, if you will. Um, so we're going to go go through the roster. We're going to go through the transactions um, as uh, we push the record where we're at. And then uh, we'll talk about some of the players that we acquired, some of the players that landed on the practice squad, and of course, the position groups going through the roster, just to kind of see how we feel about it, where we're at, what we need to do um, in our minds, and um, where we're okay. So today, there was a lot of stuff going on. And and yesterday, so if you count yesterday and, and today a little bit, there's just a ton of stuff going on. Seahawks uh, made all those cuts that, that Keith talked about. We also cut um Haynes um on the on the offensive line and we ended up acquiring a center guard tackle guy off waivers from San Francisco a guy by the name of Dakota Shepley a 6'5 300 pound um lineman that Pete Carroll really likes um and they really like him at center now he's taken a lot of different snaps at a lot of different positions but um he took 70 snaps this um, preseason, according to Pro Football Focus, at the center position, and that's where the Seahawks like him. Um, cornerback Nigel Warrior, which is a great name for like a football player. So I hope he lives up to his name. And it sounds like <laughs> he, he does in in the way that he likes to hit. Like he he's a really aggressive kind of a corner. He's uh, transitioning actually from free safety in college. Went to Tennessee. Went undrafted. He's the son of, um, oh my gosh, now I just lost it. I think it's Dale, Dale something or other. Um, and he's, he runs like a four, four, three. He's very aggressive, great tackler. 
He's fairly sticky. Looks like he's coming in to compete on the right cornerback position, which is where Trey Flowers is, which is where Witherspoon is um, a lot of the times. And then they, the team decided to move um, DJ Reed to, to the left side full time. Um, so lots of things going on there as far as transition. We'll talk about that a little bit later as we kind of get into that roster. So there's an, a new guy to pay attention to. Uh, quarterback Jake Luton was the free agent quarterback that we acquired, um, not through waivers, but just uh, he was cut earlier and um, he was available. So we went out and got him. He's a six foot six guy. Finished his college career at Oregon State. Moved around before that quite a bit. Um, played a little bit last year for the Jaguars. Um, 60 out of 110 for 473 yards, two touchdowns, but six interceptions. So not sure what we're getting with this guy. And then let's go through the roster and then we can kind of land at the end on the practice squad. Cause there's a, a couple of acquisitions today that are pretty interesting there as well. So, yeah. So we'll start with quarterback. Cause you know, Russell Wilson and, and, um, and Gina were going to, to make the team. The, the surprise, as I said earlier, was Sean Mannion, uh, making the roster who was then promptly cut. So they could, they could bring in, uh, Jake Luton, which, you know, actually is, is a pretty good pickup. He's, he's younger than, than Mannion. Um, I think a little more upside, but also been not been around the league much. And, and, uh, so he is more of a kind of a wild card thrown in there, but he's a third string quarterback. And usually those are on the practice squad. So mm -hmm. it is a little weird that he's there. I'm wondering if they're waiting. I imagine. Yeah. I'm wondering if they're just kind of waiting for um, all the transaction stuff to die down and teams are more focused on the game in front of him instead of, you know, trying to pick off guys and then they'll, they'll push him through to the practice I didn't squad. And that Mannion ended up, uh, back with uh, the Vikings, who he mm -hmm. had been with last year, and he landed on their practice squad as well. So good that he's got something going. Um, everything else on the roster stays the same at quarterback. Russell Wilson, obviously, Geno Smith is there. And then running back, um, I won the day on the predictions on the running back stuff, uh, <laughs> but, but it still kind of seems kind of off to me just a little bit. Um, we weren't with Chris Carson, Rashad Penny, Alex Collin, um, DJ Dallas, Travis Homer with Nick Ballure listed also in the running back, uh, spot, not the linebacker area that I originally had kind of penciled him in at. Um, yeah. I'm surprised that uh, I'm surprised that, uh, Travis Homer made it, um, mainly just because that's a lot of running backs. They've only got four wide receivers on the roster. Um, weird. Yeah. I think you had them having that. seven and I had them having six. They've only got four. Um, and the reason why they've only got four is because one of them is in, is now a quarter, you know, they've got a quarterback taking a spot and they've got an extra running back taking a spot. Um, I didn't see anything they, out of, and they brought four onto the practice squad. So they've got a shadow roster where they can protect a couple <laughs> players a week for the, you know, three weeks. Mm -hmm. so it gives them a little bit of transaction time to kind of, manipulate that roster a little bit so they can keep those extra guys around but leaving those guys they really like and protected on the practice squad long term doesn't seem to be a, a good option and just having four available on game day in any given week seems a little light yeah i don't for, i don't see that sticking around uh i mean obviously you've got uh metcalf lockett swain and eskridge those are the four guys those are the four guys that are going to get the bulk of the snaps and playing time um the real surprise there was you know penny hart getting cut um a lot of people had him on the roster i think you and i both mm -hmm. thought that he'd made the roster he showed really well um in the summer and at the beginning of of camp i think from what I'm hearing, his ability to make plays and, and be impactful went down significantly once the pads went on and there was more contact. Uh, and maybe that had something to do with it. But um, yeah, it's still it's it's it is unexpected that he didn't make he didn't make it. Same with uh, Cade Johnson, uh, the undrafted yeah. rookie who looked really all those, good. All those guys ended up on the practice squad, though. I mean, it kind of we predicted that. At least I did. The the Cody Thompson, I thought he might make the roster as well as Penny Hart. And then Cade Johnson, you were kind of all over that as far as swapping him with, with Cody Thompson. So it seems like they've got a few interchangeable players there that we mm -hmm. both had on our lists and, and the team valued as well. Darce, uh Robinson was cut prior to the major cut down day. And then um, Connor Wennington was another undrafted guy that 
that I thought might stick. He didn't even make the the uh, practice squad, so I'm mm-hmm. um, not sure what's going on there. Of course, anything can happen. Those guys can come and go. The practice squad is fairly flexible. Let's go back to the running backs just really quick. Just kind of wanted your opinion about the survival of Rashad Penny on this list and Travis Homer. It's like, <clears throat> yeah, well, it, I think it wasn't okay so much list, with but. it wasn't so much with Penny that was the surprise. I mean, other than you know he he, he is a guy that might have had some value in a trade, so I thought maybe they would free up a roster spot by moving him um, that way. But they weren't going to cut him. Um, part of it is, is we were like, ah, I mean, he hasn't really done much, but they were holding him back in the, in the, um, preseason. They were, he was on a major, um, you know, pitch count. So that wasn't a, uh, a, his lack of production in the preseason was more by design, I guess. Um, but the fact that Travis Homer made the roster, despite pretty much not showing up at all in camp or, uh, the, or the preseason, mostly because of injury, but um, even when he was healthy, he just wasn't impactful. I, I was rather surprised to see they them ha- to have take up a roster spot there when they've got other guys I think they would have liked to have been able to keep around, um, especially at the wide receiver position. It seems like some sort of placeholder situation or something, because in the end, when you do the, the big count of overall roster distribution, uh, the offense right now has 27 players. And the defense has 23. That mm-hmm. that seems just a little too lopsided. You know, well, I can um, see 25, 24, or 26, 24. I think um, it's 26, 24 because they are, yeah. if you look, if you they're counting, um, you know, the fullback Nick Ballore as a linebacker because they've yeah. only they've only got three linebackers on the roster. And so well, clearly. Put it, I mean, on the roster, at least at dot .com, they've got them listed as a running back. So you're you're probably right. Um, tight end, Disley, Everett, Parkinson. There's no surprises there. Nope. Uh, Mabry ended it up up on the uh, the practice squad. Mm-hmm. Um, how about the offensive line, Keith? Got a so lot the, to talk about there. There is. So the, the offensive line turned out um, kind of how we expected initially. I mean, you had, um, you know, the usual suspects, um, Brown, Lewis, Posick, Fuller, Jackson, Shell, um, Forsyth, Abuahi, Haynes. Um, mm-hmm. and Jake Curran. So they had 10. Um, all made, fantastic, I thought. Um, yeah, I mean, that that's that's ideal. I mean, that that's the group that you'd want. They did move on from Haynes uh, when they brought in Shepley, uh, who is a center. Now, he's a guy that can play anywhere on the line. The, the 49ers had him as a tackle. And uh, he was looked at kind of a backup and, and, and that. But the Seahawks have wanted him for a while and he was it was very unexpected that he became available the Seahawks were had no belief that he was going to get waived and then all of a sudden he was there and so they put in their waiver claim on him and they were surprised he lasted to mm-hmm. when the Seahawks picked him up so I mean Pete Carroll was like almost giddy with the idea that they were able to add uh, Dakota Shepley uh, to the mix he's gonna they're gonna bring him in as a center um, not as a tackle, and so, mm-hmm. uh, which is more of what he was in college, and I think it's a and, better and fit. From what for I him. understand, according to the you know the the stuff in college where he was up in British Columbia, the way that he was used was more of a power blocking scheme and so forth. They brought him into San Francisco. He he took a you know snaps all over the place, guard center mm-hmm. tackle, center uh, settled in at, at center. But the cool thing about him is he's got the size and athleticism to really excel in the in that zone uh, that wide zone oh, scheme yeah. that they they like to employ and, and they were able to pick him off from San Francisco. So you hurt San Francisco in two ways: a, it's San Francisco, and b, <laughs> b, it's Shanahan's uh, offense, and we're mm-hmm. running a very similar scheme here. Um, so he's going to be asked to do very similar things. The learning curve is going to be less, and you get a guy that's got real upside in that scheme specifically. I think it's a great move. Yeah, I I, I think that San Francisco believed that given his he, you know Canadian played you know Canadian uh, college football, actually spent a year in the CFL, 
Um, but they were going to be able to sneak him through and onto the practice squad, and the Seahawks just said no um, to that. So, what did you think about the Jake Curran thing? Um, I like having Jake Curran make the roster. Um, yeah. I think he's a guy; he's earned it. Um, I'm a little surprised that they have um, five tackles because well, they, well, Cedric Abuhe did go on to injured reserve today late. That's true. So it was it was late um, with, with, with him going on there. He, this is not a permanent trip to injured reserve. Correct. He Minimum was of three weeks. Yeah. So he was kept on the roster through the initial uh, 53 and you have to stay on the roster for 24 hours um, before you can go on IR and be uh, to eligible to return. If they put you on yeah. IR before that, you're done. Um, and so that's what they did. They, they, they kept him. They, uh, they dropped him, you know, they, they kept him around. They got him out there. He'll be back. Um, but it gives yeah, the, them the interesting thing with that is the Brown contract situation and the, the shell situation. So now that you've lost Abu which was our primary backup for a minimum of three weeks. And so if anything should happen to those other two guys, currently you've got Jamarco Jones, Stone Forsyth, and Jake Curran as mm-hmm. your tackles that can come in and take snaps should one of those two guys not be able to, which is, uh, I don't know. You know, yeah. it's early in the season, but still. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and Jamarco Jones, I guess the team still views him as a tackle, but, uh, you know, he got a lot why. He gets a lot of play at guard. He's and he's a better guard. Um, he's, I'd say, but a well above serviceable at guard, and he's not serviceable at tackle. So it seems weird that they continue to to put him out there. Um, but Stone Forth, so, Stone Forsyth and Jake Curran both looked great in the preseason. I mean, Forsyth was a it was a little rocky the first game and and series but he really settled down um in the second and third games and and played really well and so i'm i'm actually not mm-hmm. that concerned about the tackle depth i would have liked to have had a buhi um available just because he's a swing tackle and so you can have one guy uh available um you know on the game day roster which is smaller rather than having to have both but you know it works. I, I'm I'm pleased to see the kids that performed well make the roster because they've yeah, earned it. And it's interesting. The offensive line is interesting to me because there's only one undrafted rookie free agent offensive lineman on the entire practice squad. So they they feel pretty comfortable with their mm-hmm. roster and or the fact that they've got an extra week before the season starts to be able to kind of manipulate the roster. So we might not completely be done yet and we've seen a lot a lot of moves in a lot of different spots and and the offensive line could be one of those that still has a, a minor tweak or two yeah and um with abuhi going on injured reserve i'm curious to see what they do with um <laughs> phil haynes and whether he ends up back Phil haynes was cut he was today um yeah, he was he was cut in order to make room for uh, Shepley, but yes. now with Abuhi moving oh, to you IR, mean he might come back. To the yeah, I was wondering if he was going to come back or the practice squad. Yes, they do have um, one spot remaining on the practice squad, by the way. They do, and so I'm not sure what what they're going to do with that, but that does seem that does seem that, that's that's interesting to me. He was good enough to make the 53. <laughs> um, they just like Shepley more when he became available. But if he's good enough to make the 53, um, he should at least land on the practice squad. So let's shift over to the defensive side of the ball. Um, there was really not too many surprises in the first two levels of the defense mm-hmm. until you got to the back side. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But let's start at defensive tackle. It kind of went down the way that we thought it would. Al Woods, yep. Ford, Brian Monet with Robert Kimdichi. On the which we squad. thought he was going to be right on the bubble and probably cut. And, and we said likely a, a practice squad candidate because of the veteran ability to have those guys on there. And that's in fact, what happened Jared Hewitt, I thought was another player that the team would elect to keep around given his performance and the way that he was able to kind of generate some penetration in the preseason, obviously against second, third string kind of guys. Nonetheless, that's a great trait to show in any, oh, yeah. uh, any game and then miles adams and then uh walter palmore was uh, outright cut 
any any thoughts on the defensive tackle group? Um, no, I, it's like I said, it went down, <laughs> it's, it's, it's down kind of per, precisely how we thought it was going to be. Uh, yeah. And you so know, the I, defensive end group. For, for yeah. I mean, we had, yeah, you've got Collier, Green, Robinson, Mayo, Dunlap, Hyder, um, yes. all making right. the roster as, de, you know, as defensive ends. Uh, and even Daryl Taylor is on dot com as being a defensive end, although we know he's going to take plenty of snaps over there at Strong. Yeah, and so he's going to be the he's going to be the starting strong side linebacker. I've got him listed, um, you know, more as a as a linebacker just because mm-hmm. I needed to move people around and exactly. and make some sense of it. Because you're because as it stands um, at linebacker, according to dot com, they've got three linebackers. Yeah, um, and Bobby Wagner, Jordan Brooks, Cody Barton. And by the way, Cody Barton really earned a spot this. Oh, this he year. played really well. So I I know that some people are. There's some weird about him, but he played well. He deserves that spot. Um, but Daryl Taylor is going to be the starter at the strong side uh, mm-hmm. linebacker. Um, and Alton Robinson is actually his primary backup at strong side linebacker. Which is um, really fascinating to me. That's not at all what I was thinking going into the preseason or into training camp. No, not at all. Um, and so giving Alton Robinson, you know, is, is in the linebacker mix. Uh, but at the strong side, so it's mainly against the run, and he'll brush right. the passer, and right. um, they're and not dropping that. He needs that. In, in fact, the team loves that flexibility mm-hmm. in him because Collier and and Green are not, yeah, like that. But you're going to have those guys up at, at the five tech uh, tech uh, joining Hyder, um, and so it's crowded there for Robinson, and they've got to find a way to get him on the field. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so um, having him there, I mean, I don't know if he'll get a lot of playing time there, just because they're not going to use their strong side linebacker that much. They're going to play in the nickel a lot. And they're going to rush Alton Robinson more than Benson Mayo. Uh, in fact, this could be a good, uh, a good segue into our uh, our second show next week, which is going to be kind of um, player examination. Like, what do we expect certain players to do at certain spots, and what do you do with guys like Alton Robinson? or guys like Marquise Blair, like how do they fit? How does the team uniquely get those guys with those unique skill sets on the field when it, when everything else is fairly crowded around them? Yeah, I, but those are guys you got to get on the field. They're just, yeah, they're young players, but they're, the talent is too much. Um, and so get them on the field, let them play. And if you have to sit a guy like Benson Mayo down, okay. Yeah. Um, do what you got to right. do. Alton Robinson is a bigger part of your future. And has the potential to be a bigger part of your present if you yeah, let it. It'll be interesting too how the team approaches who they dress and who they don't mm-hmm. um, at, at some of these spots that we're talking about because that'll be that'll be very interesting. Um, okay, so linebacker. In addition to the guys that we mentioned, they brought back John Radigan onto the practice squad, which yep. was expected. Um, and then Aaron Donker is the exception player that's on the practice squad. Also I'm not expected. sure if he would have made it you know, without that exemption or not, but since he's got it, he's going to be there all year. Uh, the team might as well use that you mm-hmm. know, part of the, the uh, culture and the team and kind of find out where he lands next spring. Yeah. Um, I had uh, KJ Wright as an option mm. because of, because of the injury. Mm. Um, and so I was like, you know what, if they, they could go into this, um, and I, I, when they'd only had three linebackers at first, I was like, hey, maybe that's a sign that they're bringing him in. Now it looks like he may sign elsewhere. Which well, he I did found. sign elsewhere. Did he actually sign? I heard it was he like. He was with the Oak, with the uh, Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, uh, one-year so, deal. Yep. So I knew that they were talking. I didn't know if it was done. And so that's what I was I was like. You know, we'll see if the Seahawks step up and, and bring him in. But if he has interest other uh, elsewhere, hopefully he's getting paid more. Yeah, I'm I'm just thankful. Even if it's a bump above vet, veteran minimum, he's got a chance to earn some guaranteed money. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a good move for him. He's going to be on the field. He's going to be able to show again, you know, that teams have made a mistake, including the Seahawks. And I kind of don't mind that. Sometimes a player needs to go out and prove the fact that they're still worthy of being around in the NFL. And I think he is. So I'm glad he's got the opportunity. I wish it was with the Seahawks, but at least it's with a team that is going to give him an opportunity with Gus Bradley there as the defensive coordinator. And um, they're not in the NFC. So for me, I think it's a best case scenario for um, for him to be able to go out there and do what he does. Yeah. So um, let's talk 
the defensive uh, backfield because this it's messy. A little it's bit. it is kind of messy. There was there were there was a lot of movement, um, a lot of a lot of things moving around. Um, one of the things that came out was that uh, DJ Reed is getting snaps over on the left side um, as a backup to Akella Witherspoon because Trey Flowers has outperformed him. Yeah. Um, in yeah. in training camp, and so yeah, Trey so Flowers the, appears to be the starter on the right side. The starter that the I mean, Pete Carroll basically came out and declared him the starter, and he'd taken that spot in training camp. Now, yeah. you guys, meaning you and Dan Viennes, laughed at me uh, at the live show at Aussies in Seattle in July when we had the um, the segment of buy or sell, and I was trying to sell you guys on the fact that Trey Flowers could win that spot. And you guys were like, no, 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 no. They brought Witherspoon in for a reason. He's going to get the spot. They've got yeah. Reed on the other side. It's pretty much a done deal. And I was like, I don't know. Maybe. Well, I, I, the, um, you know, Dan was saying like, he didn't think Trey Flowers was, was going to make the roster. I thought he would. I thought he would be the third corner, but I didn't think there was any chance that he would supplant either of the two guys as a starter simply because we know that Witherspoon's good and he's going to be the, the primary, you know, he's the number one corner on the team. And we saw what Reed was last year and he is a starter in the NFL. He's a guy that deserves to be, um, uh, so to get you starters believe that This signals the fact that DJ Reed is backing up Witherspoon. Uh, that's well, they moved him over to the left side in practice. He's been practicing on the right um, pretty exclusively because he's been battling with flowers for that job. He's getting snaps on the left side because he's now, the third cornerback. He and Flowers have switched have switched places. So the well, starters are going to be Witherspoon and Flowers. I did not hear about Witherspoon being the guy yet. Oh, Witherspoon's the guy. Um, that that I that that appears to be done. Like there wasn't. I mean, when they moved Reed over, it was to make room for Trey Flowers, and it was to get Reed comfortable playing on both sides. That doesn't sound like a starter to me. Okay, so uh, another couple of things. So first of all, let's go through who made it. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the safeties really quick. Jamal Adams, Quandary Diggs, Marquise Blair, Ugo Amati, Ryan Neal. Ryan Neal's still on the roster. He's not on injured reserve, anything like that at all. They do expect that he may take longer than week one or week two to, to heal, but he, they want him available as soon as he is available. And yep. so he's remaining on the roster. Everyone else was just cut outright. I was kind of a little surprised at that. Um, yeah, Cross, sorry, Crosswell. Moon. Sorry, Crosswell was the guy that I. Yeah, he he was doing really well in camp, um, and I was kind of expecting him to at least get pushed through to the practice squad, but I didn't see his name on there. I was really surprised. DJ Reed, Kella Witherspoon, Trey Flowers, Trey Brown, and a new pickup, Nigel Warrior, on the fifty-three. John mm -hmm. Reed, a the guy they just traded a conditional twenty twenty-two or. 2023, 2023. pick so nothing no compensation essentially uh he he gets cut and then comes back onto the practice squad um and actually yeah. it's not just no compensation basically it's no compensation period by not making the roster that yes, that, yeah, that conditional yeah. pick be yes. literally became zero um so they gave up exactly nothing to bring him in and he still he still landed on the practice squad now, a little surprise to me, no surprise to you, since it was in your prediction last week, uh, Demarius Randall was the surprise cut for me out of this group. And um, you kind of kind of felt like that was going to happen. Yeah. I, like, I didn't even have him as a practice squad player or a bubble guy. I thought he was just gone. And it appears that was the case. So, so our specialists are all secure. You missed a guy. You missed a guy at cornerback. Who? Sidney Jones. Oh yeah. Well, see, he's not official yet, but yes, let's talk about Sidney Jones. Yeah, because he's <laughs> he's not he wasn't official as of this afternoon on on dot com, but uh, it's obviously just you know technical paperwork shuffling and so forth. So the Seahawks went out and, and got this guy. What's the deal? So Sidney Jones was, if I remember, right, a second round pick out of Washington. So he's from around here, mm -hmm. um, and. When he's healthy, he's been quality. The problem is he's never been healthy. He's, he's played like half of the games of it, uh, eligible for him to be. Yeah. Um, and it's just, yeah, that, that part's been bad. Um, he's kind of been, I mean, a, 
Akella Witherspoon's kind of been that way too. I mean, he's been healthy more, but um, they've both been good when healthy. And it's the when healthy part that is So how does he factor into the equation? If we add him now onto the roster, somebody else has got to go because um, I've got my, my roster sheet is full with 27 on offense, 23 on defense, three on special teams. But does that have, does that have that a, does not have a rice? It does not. Oh yeah, you're right. It doesn't buoy. have, a, it has a, it doesn't, yeah, right. Cause it has a buoy on the roster, him, not on IR. I have him. Yeah. So yep, that, so, that is an open spot available. Yep. Sydney so, Jones takes that spot. So there's that. And then there's a, a couple of, let's go through the practice squad really quick. We don't mm-hmm. have a heck of a lot of time, but if we go a little over, this is fine. Um, it's kind of an, an off week for us anyway. Um, the league, uh, the team originally announced 14. They've added two since that list was uh, developed. So we're up to 16. One of those guys is a an exemption. So we're right at 15. Uh, defensive tackle, Miles Adams. Uh, Aaron Dunker, we mentioned some of these as we went through the roster. Greg Island, uh, the guard. Uh, wide receivers, Aaron Fuller, Penny Hart, Cade Johnson, and Cody Thompson. Uh, defensive tackle, Jared Hewitt. Uh, running back, Josh Johnson, uh, which was a, a nice little uh, running back in preseason. So it's nice to have that guy just kind of in the back pocket a little bit. Olivier um, Lestage is on there. Tyler Mabry at uh, tight end. The oldest guy on the roster, which is not too terribly old, is Robert Kim Uh We'll see how long he lasts on there. I don't know that any other team's really going to come looking for him. Mm-hmm. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if he can somehow work himself up into the 53. John Reed, the cornerback that we had uh, previously talked about. John Radigan, an upside linebacker um, from Army, undrafted guy. Um, two guys at the very end of the day here that we picked up in transactions, um, cornerback, Michael Jackson, and I'll Mm -hmm. be completely honest. I didn't have time to do a lick of research for him before we press record. And then Mark Vital, which is a very, very interesting transaction that happened for the Seahawks. So he's a tight end, but in name only what Mark, Mark Vital is really known for is being a two-time Naismith finalist for Defensive Player of the Year for national champion basketball team, Baylor, in 2021. Played power forward for the Portland Trailblazers this summer, just a month ago, in Summer League. In, yeah, in the in the D-League. It's yeah. not, not like with the actual... Well, in the team. Summer League. I mean, it's yeah. Summer League. It's not even the D-League. It's just Summer League. It's like, yeah. you know, okay. nonetheless... Nonetheless, he's a very he's a very good basketball player if you watch him. And then um, he worked out this last summer uh, for a couple weeks with Russell Wilson down in San Diego as well. So there's some familiarity there. And a lot of scouts out there are comparing this guy in the way that he moves and his athleticism and his vertical. Like this guy was a dunk champion in high school, like nationally. There's a whole video out there of him just dunking the basketball. Um, comparing him to Antonio Gates, mm-hmm. which that's is the, a little interesting for me. That's the obvious uh, comparison because obvious. it's true. It's but. the same. It's the same. You know, it's it's the story. You have a an athletic, you know, power forward who's got that size, um, you know, hand eye coordination to go up and catch the ball, but not mm-hmm. the football skills. And so, you know, getting a chance to be a tight end and go be a red zone target and, and that kind of stuff. It's, it's interesting. So the Seahawks have gone down this road before. Yeah. Um, and the interesting thing though, for me, Keith is those mm-hmm. Naismith defensive player of the year candidate awards, because that tells you a little bit about his mindset. Oh, and his work ethic because and, play, so playing that, defense is a, is a yes, really so mental. That to me means way more than almost anything else in his resume so far, mm-hmm. because um, it really shows the ability to, fight through yep. a lot of stuff, not just traffic in, in football and on the field, but, but, but contact adversity. Yeah. Uh, it'd be, you know, just that whole mindset of being a professional at this level. And um, so I'm curious to see how long he can last on the practice squad uh, mm-hmm. this season. If he lasts all the year on there, there's a tremendous upside for him to come in next year and just be kind of ready to compete. 
for a, a, a real roster spot. And we'll see. And you never know. Guys like this are just sometimes magic or they're just complete duds. Yep. And if it's, if it's magic and they somehow work themselves out into getting on the roster and dressing for game day on a few different occasions and they happen to get in and make a play or whatever, special teams becomes their thing and they perform so well during the week, the team can't ignore them and gives them a shot. Um, that's his that's his way to, to, to get it. And it's up to him. I mean, it really is up to him. So anything else before we kind of wind up? No, um, by my count, I believe they have a, a spot available on, um, on the practice squad still. Mm -hmm. Is that right? I um, believe that that is the case. And so they have, they have one more spot available. Uh, I'm curious as to who that goes to. I'm also curious to see if we get to week one without um, another wide receiver added to the roster. Uh, sometimes you see, like, I think last year, the Seahawks actually cut Geno Smith and had one quarterback on the roster for the 24 hours so they could get, it, he wasn't the only one, there was more than one player, but they they could, so they could get guys past the waiver period and, in, uh, too. and on to injured reserve. And then at 24 hours later, they signed them. I, I'm curious to see if there are any of those moves coming. Um, and maybe a guy like Penny Hart ends up back on the roster. They knew that no one would pick him up. Um, and so they, you know, okay, we, we know we can get away with cutting him. He'll be back. Um, once we get, you know, someone onto IR and that kind of thing. So I don't know. I, I'm, I cannot imagine they go into week one with four wide receivers. Yeah, this is an extra fascinating kind of time for the Seahawks because they have that extra week. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're seeing a little bit extra on on the ro roster manipulation and cuts and angling and trying to manipulate um, the situation. And there will be more of that here for the next few days until they get into Monday of next week. Monday is the meeting day. Tuesday's practice day for them. And then they, they really start. And, and um, so they kind of want all this monkey business out of the way uh, before they get to that point. Mm -hmm. um, just for listeners um, on our upcoming shows, so we've got um, next week on Tuesday, we'll be releasing our um, prediction show, which is the, the regular season prediction show. We'll go through the, um, the regular season uh, games and kind of figure that out. I think this will be our like fourth or fifth annual show where we predict we've been fairly close most years. I'm really interested to see if we see things the same way with this roster this year, because there's a lot of different opinions seemingly out there, whether we're a 10 win team, whether we're a 13 win team and everything in between. And so to be curious to see kind of well, what on that. The, the national media has picked up what their, their expectations are from Seattle uh, a month ago. They were predicting six. Um, no, now they seem to absurd. now they seem to be predicting nine, which I still think is absurd. Um, but yeah, it is it is interesting that even you know the people that you can tell don't know much about the Seahawks and their roster, um, they've been bumping up their predictions, and so that's interesting. Yeah. So the second show of the week is going to be a player expectation show. We're kind of going to go through just some different categories and take a look at the players and kind of figure out individually where we think they, we expect them to, um, to elevate their game or fall back, whatever. And then we're going to come in with our very first preview show of the season. We've got a contest uh, away against the Indianapolis Colts for the first regular season game. I believe it's on September 12th. It's a 10 a.m. game, so we'll get you all ready for that. And uh, I'm fired up. I mean, this is going to be a great season. Got a lot to look forward to. Three shows a week. Um, yeah. So the content's just going to be there consistently every week. We're excited about that, too. So you can find Keith on Twitter at MyersNFL. I'm at NWSeahawk. The show is at Hawks Playbook, SeahawksPlaybook.com. has all the shows, some other great content as well. You can find us on YouTube. Just go there and subscribe. Make sure you get those. Uh, videos in your feed every week uh, multiple times a week and then your favorite podcast platforms as well so until next time keith go go hawks. Hawks. seahawks playbook podcast listeners thanks for joining us for another edition of the show you can find us on twitter bill is at nw seahawk keith is at myers nfl 
and the show is at Hawks Playbook. You can listen and subscribe to the show at SeahawksPlaybook.com.